Mr. Martin Freeman is on the show tonight. There he is. How wonderful to see your face. Now, Martin, you were actually here in studio in around March 2020, and then right. obviously the which was, you know, let's be honest, three decades ago. Um, <laughs> what's been, what's, how have you been over these last 14 months? What's been keeping you sane? Um, my kids have been keeping me sane and getting back on, um, getting back actually and reading. In, in Britain, over the first bit of COVID, it was, uh, um, among many other horrible things, one upside was that the weather was nice. Yes. And it was, it was sort of very, very lovely weather from sort of March through to August. And I'm lucky enough to have a garden and I just sat outside a lot uh, reading books. And you know, I don't know whether you're the same as me, but I, in my adult life, I've, I've developed a pattern where I start about 18 books and don't finish. Absolutely. You know, yes. 15 of them. Yes. And it was just a really nice way of actually just completing book after book. It was lovely, actually. And I was, so reconnecting with how much I love reading was a really um, sanity-saving thing. That's great, because you're right. I've read the first three chapters of a lot of books, and I think that shows yeah, when I talk good. on the show. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. That won't come as a shock to anyone who's met me. That, it really won't. Um, but, yes, you're right, kids were a, were a wonderful sort of distraction and, and focus during that time. And your, your kids are a, a little bit older than mine. Are they, have they seen any of your work? Have they seen your shows and, and movies? Are they fans of, of any particular things that you've put out into the world? They've seen quite a lot. I mean, yeah, Grace is um, nearly 13 and Joe is 15. So they've seen quite a lot. They, li they, like, um, they like a bit of Sherlock. They like a bit of The Hobbit. They like Fargo, actually. Um, really? Yeah, they like... There's a, a British film I did, which you might know, which Americans won't know, called Nativity. It's like yes. a Christmas, you know. Um, no, they've seen quite a lot of my stuff. I'm yet to sort of... I think they're, um, they're big fans of the American office. Right. Um, that not, must Not hurt. so much the British <laughs> Every time, because I like the American Office as well. For sure. But I also, I've, I've also seen the British one. Yes. So I, I kind of, you know, I'm able to enjoy both. Whereas they've only seen the American one, they don't really give uh, much of a hoot about the British one. Yeah. Are you never tempted while they're watching the American Office to go, this wouldn't exist without me? I, I'm tempted, James. <laughs> I do it. All, I do. I do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. I go way past temptation. I'm, <laughs> I am that. I'm that needy and shallow, I do do that, yeah. I mean, when you talk there about some of your projects, it, I do find it quite ast astounding, actually. I, th I think it's so incredible. So much of your work, in a world where content is constantly just pushed out, seemingly all the yeah. time, you have so many projects that have sort of penetrated culture, really, you know, the things that really got deep into culture, whether, like, when you talk about Fargo or The Hobbit, I mean, you know, The Office for me was changed my life, I think, in many ways. Then Sherlock came out and people are, are, are I know, constantly asking you whether there will be more Sherlock. And, I mean, yeah. one thing that you're in that, that I think is... I think I can say this is definitely coming back, is Black Panther, right? That's yeah. just, there's going to be... There, there will be another Black Panther movie. Is there anything that you can tell us about that film? Yes, I've written some notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, had a, I had a Zoom call with uh, Ryan Coogler, the director and co-writer, about, I don't know, about seven or eight weeks ago, I suppose, and he took me through... Um, he sort of meticulously took me through all of my characters' beats in the film. You know, he, he took me through the film, but incorporating my characters' beats. And, and some of it was really... <laughs> So it was very, like, very odd. And I think but he could see by the reaction on my face and some of the things he was saying, but my face must have been going <laughs> like that because he kept sort of stopping and going, no, I can see where you <laughs> Stay with... He kept sort of saying, stay with me, but this is going to work. You know, it's, it's, I think people are in for, a, I hope, a real... I mean, we've not done it yet. Who knows? Sure. It, we, might, we might make it awful. But, um, no, I'm, I'm hoping we won't. And I, I hope people are going to be in for a... Treat. I mean, it's it's a very obvious. It's a very strange, of course, thing. You know, when when Chadwick passed last year, I suppose apart, you know, after the initial shock of that and the truth, you know, it was just an appalling thing to to find out. The the next thing was well, okay, so I guess we're not doing, you know, that that film won't or can't happen again. And so um, Marvel came to us reasonably shortly afterwards and and said, look, you know, obviously this is 
a dreadful thing, uh, but we're going to go on, you know. So, so that was the that was the plan from a while ago, and and so obviously the the hope is that we we do the first film justice justice, and we do Chadwick's legacy on it justice, and do you know just and make it hopefully another a good film. You know? I'm certain you will. I mean, now you're in a you're in a place in your career where you know very brilliantly you you have a you have a, a pick of projects that, that you want to do you're able to to curate if you like your your career but let's go back to before before martin freeman was this you know superstar let's talk i want to know about auditions that you were going to fresh out of drama school what kind of what kind of mm. auditions were you doing around london back then before you kind of got the break in the office my my early commercial auditions were pretty embarrassing and, and were they they hurt actually i mean the, the very first time i went for a commercial uh casting it was the it was the it was an early indication of like feeling like you were in well they used to call it the meat market you know yeah. and occasionally i would be in commercial auditions with models you know i remember once going to a commercial audition and the people i, I recognized at least two of the people from fashion magazines, you know, like women and men, yeah. who were just beautiful, gorgeous creatures. And frankly, James, I wasn't one of them. Do you know what I mean? I, I, was, I was an actor, I was okay, but like, I was not known for my leggy beauty. You know? <laughs> it's like, I'm definitely the wrong, the wrong place here. One of the worst ones ever, do you remember Tango? Tango was a, a fizzy drink company. Yeah. You know? And I don't know how well known it is in America, but there was a period in the 90s where Tango kind of did this almost anti-advertising shtick where they would make it horrible and sort of, you know, almost off-putting. That's how we're going to sell fizzy drinks. We're going to make it almost disgusting. And I remember being on all fours in a, in a rehearsal room in London, saying something humiliating and sort of way beyond self-deprecation into some form of sadomasochistic improvisation, <laughs> being on all fours and probably barking like a dog or some sort of animal. For this guy, the director, who I think was quite a big cheese in the, in the advertising world, <laughs> But I remember as, as I was on all fours thinking, yeah, this is a low. I'm, I'm a young man, but I already know this is, um, this is a low. If I live, please God, if I live to 100, this will be one that I remember as, yeah, the nadir of, um, of my casting experience. Do you know the amazing thing about this is I think, and I'm not sure, because they did quite a lot of commercials around that time, <laughs> I think I might have got that commercial. Because I know you're joking. <laughs> I was in a Tango commercial that got banned. It, they, they banned it from there because they said that it encouraged bullying, which uh, I, I wasn't sure how it was. But it was a similar, it was a very, very similar process. So, I remember, so you've, got, you've got a part in a Tango ad? I got cast and it was, and you know that thing, because it used to be the way if you got commercials at home, if you got cast in an advert, you used to get repeats. And I didn't have any money at this point, And I started thinking, oh my God, they're going to show this all the time. And it, was, it came out on a Friday and was banned by the Monday. <laughs> so I didn't make any money. I've just been told we've got a photo. Hang on, show the photo. There you go. That's me. James Renner dislikes oh. the untamed aggression of Orange Tango. Well, James, we know where you live. What are you doing in my house? What, what are you doing, doing in my house? house? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Wow. Tell you what, though. That's... I look better now, don't I? <laughs> I was like, yeah. Um, let's talk about your brilliant show, Breeders. For anyone who hasn't caught up with it yet, tell us what it's about and, and what's new in the second season. Uh, Breeders is, a, a, I suppose, a family comedy, mo mostly comedy, but I think a bit of a drama as well, um, that, that it was created by myself and Chris Addison and Simon Blackwell and... It stars myself and Daisy Haggard as a husband and wife, and it's the first series our children were, let's say, four and seven, and now this series, we've moved on several years, so our children are sort of just 13 and 10, 11. Um, and it's about the sort of trials and tribulations of, of family life, really. And I, 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 my plan for it always was that it would show all of it, you know, all, all but bits of family life, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly, everything. I mean, mainly it came out of a a desire on my part anyway i can't speak for simon and chris but on my part i couldn't go to any more nice north london you know soirees with everyone going on about how just how amazing 
being a parent was without also the other balancing honest the honest thing which is and it's the hardest thing you'll ever do if you live to a thousand years old if you want to do it well if you want to be a good parent and present and you know there at the coal face it's it's hard man you know it's it's very very hard and i don't think there should be any shame in that and but i think that in our current well in the last sort of say 10 years certainly of social media life it's sort of uh, i don't know i think we're all sort of pretending and lying i think we're lying a lot yeah no, about I think you're what absolutely it... right well i think the show is great i love the first season i'm really excited to to devour this second season and all of its honesty in